This is V-Rock. 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 Chops. Welcome back, Top Nation. We back with a special, special guest. I definitely one of the pioneers of Memphis percussion, as far as the, especially in this advanced era. The legendary Jeff, the man, Thomas. Everybody clap your hands. Drum roll. We're gonna go with the moment. Yeah. What's this up, bro? Chops. Chops. Man, man, how you doing, man? Uh, I'm doing appreciate good. the invite. Glad to be here, man. Well, I'm most definitely. I couldn't look. You can't do. There's certain things you can't do without having certain people on here. So you, it, it was a, it was a no brainer for me. <laughs> it was a no brainer for me, man. I appreciate, I appreciate it, man. man. Glad, I, glad to be able to come by. For sure, for sure. Ooh, well, I'm man, let's dive right die. into it. You know, so we're gonna start with. Uh, what high school did you attend? Chops. And if you attended college, for the people that don't know you, what college did you attend? All right. Uh, I am a graduate of Hamilton High School, class of 2000. Okay. And uh, after I left Hamilton, I moved on to Nashville, Tennessee to attend Tennessee State University. Wow. Class all right, all right, all right. Class of 2006. Hold on. Let's go. Let's, let's hold this moment for a second. <laughs> From all roads to give me a aristocrat on this line. Let's go! We're gonna hold this one. Something gonna happen. Right on this little bit of thinking. What's what kind of routine to give one more time? Uh, that is. Tennessee State University. Oh, okay, I make sure I heard it right. The yeah. Tennessee State University. <laughs> yes, sir. Cool, cool, man. That's what's up. All right. So, what's what's your favorite drum rudiment, and why you consider it to be your favorite? Ooh, man, coming out the gate swinging. Um, favorite <sighs> for the sake of just narrowing it down, I'm gonna go with the six stroke roll. Okay. Um. Is just some about the ability to move the accents around, whether you're starting with both accents uh, at the top of the phrasing or just one moving on to two or just starting with the rows moving on to the two at the end. Just that versatility of like three ways you could play it. And then when you, you know, put it in phrases, whether it's the cadence or a song, it's some about those two accented beats that gives that phrase, some attitude and some feeling, this emotion behind it. So uh, if I had to narrow it down to one, which is really tough to do, I'm, I'm gonna go with the six stroke. Okay, good. That's, mm -hmm. that's different right there. You know, especially being a chopper, you know, think of, people think it's some crazy, but that's that real basic <laughs> rudiment. That's, oh yeah, in, in the 40. That's right, that's right. So cool. All right, well, what was that moment for you uh, when you was growing up and coming up and going into life that you made that decision that I want to play the drums like this is something that I really want to do when was that moment for you it hit very late um I would say like most kids growing up man you see movies and you would go to the parades uh like we had our fair show here in Memphis going downtown seeing the high school groups march by 
and you you know look at your parents you say i want to play drums right and i actually had a drum set when i was about three years old and oh. i was three so like i did three-year-old stuff like poured <laughs> baby powder on the heads and hit them and just to watch it go up and you know that kind of silly stuff never got another drum set again for <laughs> many years later um but i'm gonna have to give credit to uh my cousin uh steve potts jr for hey. giving me that introduction into what was I would later learn a show style marching percussion, but uh, we would be at my grandmother's house and we used to fuss, like all my cousins, we would all hang out over there and he would hog the TV watching VHS tapes of Jackson State, uh, other high schools. And we were like, man, when you finish watching all this drum stuff and one day I sat down and I was like, okay, explain what I'm seeing, what, what's going on here? And that was the intro, like that was when the door swung open the first time, I'll say, uh, to introduce me to this whole world of drumming. Okay. So cool, An another parts moment, he, he even got another one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so of all the things that you have done in the marching and drum set and all that stuff, what is one of your favorite memories as a drummer that, you know, that you can remember like, hey, this is my, Ooh. It's he time. coming out swinging again. He's like, I want the one, the one moment out of so many. Um, favorite. This is probably going to be a redundant thing, but because I'm from Memphis and my introduction into band was show style marching percussion, uh, the Southern Heritage Classic. Uh, most of the times it was TSU and Jackson. There was some times that Grambling participated mm -hmm. in that event. But uh, so being that that was my introduction, getting to see them when I got a chance to march in, as, as we all say, man, coming in through that tunnel, you hit the field and you got the two crowds supporting their own groups, like just being, you know, like I'm here now, it's me. I got the uniform on, I'm not watching anybody else. I'm getting to take it in. That, uh, yeah, that would, that would have to go as one. Cool, man. All right, so all this time, you know, that you played and, taught and learned and led what is one of the biggest takeaways uh that you got from playing drums like um a thing that was really important to me in my experience was community and environment mm -hmm. um going back to that early introduction into what was going on when pots was like you know it just to you know, be completely 100 and forthcoming. The section that I was watching when I sat down with him to see what was this whole thing that you so into take hogging the TV all the time. It was a J State section. I think it was 96, 97, or it may have been 95, 96, if I'm not, if I'm, yeah, if I remember correctly. They came to Westwood for a, uh, I don't know if it was a major red event, but the section performed and it was different. Like I had never seen, um, First of all, it was it was mostly black. It was it was it was us, and right. this interpretation was different. It wasn't the drum corps uh, DCI kind of feel. It was a lot of personality in their presentation, uh, the way they played, the swag, the movements. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Because prior to that, I had never really given band or drums that serious a look. Right. So um, so yeah, like getting that introduction. From him and seeing like this is what it you know what it is um man i got lost in my reflection there <laughs> <laughs> the original question was because I'm, I'm i'm trying to pull back from stuff from like almost 20 years ago it's all good um take away take away appreciate it. thank you sir i'm gonna have to make some notes here um <laughs> Yeah, like that sense of community environment, like how important it was to my development and in getting involved in playing. There were so many guys that, uh, you know, just gave me little nuggets of information that I just kind of pieced together throughout the years. And POTS was my gateway into meeting these people because they didn't go to Hamilton. Right. So, you know, he was introducing me to the landscape, like, you know, at, at this school, like at Westwood, you got... Lloyd and Courtney and Chicken and Daphne and at Whitehaven you got Brian Kemp, Charles Streeter, Ian, uh, T Terrence Perkins, Yum Yum, Melrose, you got Jazz and like you name the school there was somebody 
whose talent was uh, was well respected and people knew it across the city. And for the not the younger viewers, this is long before social media, so like everything came through word of mouth. Yeah. You know, at Frazier, you had Lil Mike. I just I just thought of another name, guy that was chopping on snare. So um, being introduced to people from different schools and them saying like, oh, Pops, you got a cousin that's trying to play drums? Well, how long you been playing? I kind of just started, you know, junior year of high school. And it's like, oh, you got a lot of work to do. Yeah. And so they would chime in and give me little nuggets and tidbits and things to, you know, practice from, you know, Paul Lacey, Mario Dennis, Greg Pettis, uh, like, Tony Davis, like it's a it's a lot of guys. Like I, I hate to start naming because I don't want to forget yeah. anybody, but that environment, learning about the community of people who uh, who were doing this and had been doing it a while, was very very helpful for me. Who was a I was a late starter. Like my first instrumental music class was the tenth grade. Huh. My first time participating in a marching band ensemble was eleventh grade. Huh. That was it. Like that was the beginning. No junior high, no middle school experience. I didn't even like play with a, a community center group. Like I was green. I was a straight noob. Like coming in. So, yeah, man, that 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 community was very helpful. That's cool. Cool, man. So. Well, let's take it back. Let's uh, just hearing that you started your 11th grade years playing is even more mind blowing. So, what went into? Of course, you said, like I said, you had people, you know, sewing into you and uh, giving you, I, you know, advice and pointers and tips and stuff. When did that moment? Uh, we can just start there, uh, going into from 10th grade going into 11th grade, since that's where you started. What gave you that drive and passion to? get into drums like that and just to excel because i think you were you sexually at hamilton your senior year my senior year mm -hmm. so in a year's time from you starting to graduate you was already advanced enough to become a sexual what went into that plan i know i know genetics because you know music runs in your family so that's part of it <laughs> but uh how, what was that like that transformation from the grind like how did you grind to get to that that level because it may be some people out there that never played before and, mm -hmm. and I'm telling them about what well, you could tell them about you in one year in a few months time you became dominant <laughs> so how did that that uh transition happen it, it wasn't and I appreciate the company I don't know it was it definitely went dominant starting off of course um there was a lot of growing pains moments because a lot of the people I was watching and learning that existed, you know, through word of mouth, had that earlier start. And it was their frustration of, okay, I know where to start, but there's all that training of gaining that muscle memory in order to start moving in the direction where they were. So just seeing, having the exposure of the examples was was key. Like uh, Potts would, you know, borrow a set of, this is throwback, just like to tell the audience how old I am. You know, this was we watching the stuff on VHS tapes, mm -hmm. and this is probably before the VHS adapters with those little smaller ones that you could put in yeah. <laughs> to get into the VCR. But it would be tapes of, you know, college, different colleges, uh, different high schools, and getting to see the different levels of, of playing abilities, the different approaches, uh, good habits, bad habits, and saying, okay. Um, you know, I got to start, you know, plowing my way along this road and every day because I was trying to make up for time that like I just didn't have because I was starting in the, in the 10th grade. Um, I For like two years, there was not a day that passed. That I didn't pick those chops up for at least 15 minutes. Like I had this one routine where uh, this is another throwback moment watching MTV. I would find two shows that I liked that came on back to back. They were 30 minutes apiece. So starting off, it was like, can you go from the intro of the show, just doing diddles open on one hand and make it to the first commercial break? And after it came back, you know, maybe the hand's tired. So you do the other one and I'm watching the show, but I'm practicing at the same time. So eventually that, that moved on to let's go the whole 30 minute show without breaking. And so that was starting to build endurance 
uh, and getting used to holding the stick and different stick weights and trying to get your finger control together. So that was like one little thing I would do, but it was just playing all the time, repetition, 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 as many reps as you can get so that your body starts to recognize, oh, this is what he's asking me to do. And it'll do it without you having to pay so much conscious attention. So uh, yeah, that man, plus reaching out, you know, seeing that you've made some progress and you want to show somebody something, they'd be like, oh, okay, yeah, you all right. You still got a ways to go. So that kind of like let you know you you moving, but you're not you're not there yet. Oh, yeah. And that was a constant, constant grind for two years, just just to get a decent sound. Like I knew there was only so much ground I was gonna be able to cover, but let's let's make it. Let's make sure you got a good clean sound. You may not be the fastest, but just play clean and you know, give it time. Uh -huh. So when was that moment that when it all clicked in for you? Like when it all, when you feel like, okay, it's coming together before, like right before college, I guess, going into your senior year or at your senior year, when did it like, okay. Or when did you, when do you remember getting your first approval of like from, from your peers saying, hey man, Jeff Cole, like when was that, uh, he got the moment? So coming in, um, I'm tagged with, oh, this Pot's cousin. Like he not he not jail. They'd be like, who's this guy? That's oh, oh this Potts, cause oh okay, what's up? Cause Potts had this reputation, everybody knew him and respected him. So, you know, that was like the 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 name badge I had to wear coming in right. just to get on the scene. And uh, I would say I couldn't, I don't know if it was like a certain game or anything. And and when we were at Hamilton, um like guys cared about playing, you know, there was some pride there. I know I mentioned a lot of names that aren't associated with the school, but um, like they, they had the pride, but what I saw that was different when I was learning who was who at the different schools was, we didn't get, a, for, for my liking, we didn't get enough of your competitor saying, hey man, y'all straight, or mm -hmm. y'all coming up. It wasn't enough respect from the other side. and in the realm of competition, that meant something to me, like just from watching sports and everything, is when your competitor can take off the, I'm about to, you know, give you the business and give you a compliment. It mm -hmm. wasn't enough of that happening. So um, that was a focus in working with the guys that I marched with at Hamilton. Like we gotta make some changes and get some organization here so that you guys get in that conversation without having, without having to ask. Like, you know, they look and see what you're doing and they respect it. So when I noticed the comments started changing when they said, oh, you know, Hamilton, like they, they doing some stuff or they got better. I was like, okay, we're being noticed. And that was different from when I first came in and they said, where are you going to school since you just started? I was like, oh, I'm in Hamilton. Oh man, why don't you transfer? Ugh. And that wasn't in the cards. Right. And I looked at that like, okay, that needs to change. Like, don't tell somebody else from Hamilton or any school that, oh, you need to come. Like, if you recruit, yeah, you recruit. But I, I just took it like, oh, okay, yeah, we got some work to do. Okay. So what, what went into your decision to go to Hamilton? What, what, what made you pick Hamilton as your school? And then once you got there, well, once you got into band and all this stuff, what made you say, this was a mistake? Because a lot of people have or has or did transfer to different schools, you know, to, to so, be competitive. Band was not a part of their decision at all. Right. Uh, went to Bellevue Junior High. Most people went to Central uh, from there. I ended up at Hamilton. Uh, had some family members who graduated from there. Got an older sister who uh, graduated from there. Marched in the band as a majorette. Um, so I end up at Hamilton and I'm taking this instrumental music class. And uh, shout out to Mr. James Cathy, who's our band director. Yeah. I'm in class and people are choosing what instruments they want to play. So I'm like, hey, I want to play drums. Uh -huh. like, I got enough drummers. Like, you want to pick something else. So big shout out, you know, to my folks, man, going to the music store and buying materials that I was going to need for class. I got the Essential Elements book uh, one and two for B flat trumpet. Had a three C <laughs> mouthpiece and a ball of vowel. Oh man! I also had. The Central Elements books one and two for percussion. Okay. Said uh, two B sticks and a little a little drum pad. And I showed up to class with both. So during our you know constructive points of class, 
I would try, failed at it, but I would try to play the trumpet. Uh. And when we had like our little free time, that's when I would bring the sticks out and play on the pad. And one day, Mr. Kathy came out his office and saw me playing. And he sat there and watched me read through a few lines uh, in a book. And it was like, okay, all right, cool. You can, you can play. So that was the second time a door had been opened. Right. And that allowed me to get in the band uh, the following year, my junior year. And, you know, then we go, we go down the rest of the journey from there. But that was, that was what happened. Cool, man. So, so we got it. How we going? So let's talk about um, your senior year. Let's just reflect on your full senior year, since that's where you, you know, everything was kind of molded into place, and you transitioning into um, going, making your decision to go to college. So, how was your senior year at Hamilton? Uh, you know, as far as you say, you know, y'all getting the, the morale, the momentum, and the recognition that you know you kind of had the desire to receive. Uh, how was that? That last year, right before graduation, what do you remember the most from that that that, that senior year? Senior year, we were making large strides because um, the 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 band had reduced in size a bit prior to me joining in, but our percussion section was starting to grow. We had more guys participating, and they were getting the idea of let's take it just a little more serious than we had in the past. Um, we were you know, experiment with different material from J-State, TSU, Pine Bluff, Southern, uh, other other things. Like we were starting to make some strides there. It was starting to be a little small environment of competition growing. Like guys wanted to improve on how well they played, right. no matter what line they were on. Um, we did not get a chance to participate in what I thought was like the Super Bowl for show style percussion in the city, which was White Haven's drum competition that they would host every year. Yeah. They did later uh, participate, I think about a year or two after I graduated. So that was like, you know, I was really proud of them for the strides they made uh, continuing on. But senior year, um, I'm no longer Pot's cousin. I'm right. Jeff now. Like they, they starting to recognize, you know, who I was. And it wasn't because I was, super in anything you know I, if anything I was kind of well-rounded or I would just got some respect for closing the gap in in such a short period of time mm -hmm. so that was cool enough but then I was starting to really really study uh TSU section like I, I still liked Jackson I was still looking at TSU but I was starting to narrow down um like where do you really want to be like they had this marketing poster that they would post on their website where it showed a picture of the band and then there was the silhouette in one section. It was like, we got a spot for you. Mm -hmm. And in my mind, I'm like, what does it look like for you to have that uniform on and have that red pearl free floater on? Mm -hmm. And now it's it's you because like, you know, we would always watch the section, watching tapes, uh, Southern Heritage Classic. Um, so yeah, it was just really starting to uh, think about auditioning and preparing for the audition and then trying to keep your options open. It's like, cause you don't know what's going to happen. Um, so yeah, that's when I really, really honed in on make sure I understood, I knew the 40. Uh -huh. um, so kind of got, got some work done there and, and yeah, that's, that's about all I can recall. It's, it's, it's been a while, <laughs> it's yeah. been a while, so 20 years out. The, the, the moment, what, what, I'm pretty sure Steve Fox was the final you know, uh, motivation to go ahead and go up the road to 240 to Tennessee State, right? Or was it just... Well, he 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 was a major player in, in terms of giving me information about where he was, because he was, you know, he's section leader at this time, and just kind of giving me, you know, some inside info on, like, you know, how we operate and, and what you can expect here, but... Never pressed. Um, not like you gotta come here. Right. Like he, right. he, he, it, it was, it was never that. It was right. never that. Um, but I knew where I wanted to go because by this time, you know, I've seen so much material on well, not online, but by VHS tape. And then I think, yeah, because you start to see some stuff online from different websites that were out back then. Um, 
but I was starting to narrow down more to TSU because I loved the way the horn sounded, believe it or not. Mm. That played more of a role than many people know because mm. uh, I'm like, yeah, drums is cool. You got these different interpretations or rudiments and how you present it, but who you playing with? And do you enjoy supporting, you know, that group? And so I started to listen because like this whole band world, like I'm like I said, I'm new to everything. Like they said, oh, that guy's chopping. I'm like, okay, what does that mean? You know, All like right. I didn't know nothing. Right. And uh, so now I'm starting to listen to how arrangements are done and why this group sounds the way they do, why do they play real strong and crank or they don't and for what reason. Um, and I started to like the variety of sound I was hearing out of, out of TSU. And I was like, you know, that that's kind of cool. Like they kind of got this almost DCI and uh, drum corps influence slash show style. They like sitting in the middle kind of sort of with the style and then the music very you know, from your pop, your your old school, your jazz. And I was like, oh, okay, that's cool to hear all those those different influences in the same book. So yeah. that, that play hit me. Yeah, man, I know Posh, he he has a sort of way of getting your attention. Like, I remember when I was coming up, like I say, I had a brief moment of immaturity when I wanted to go to Jackson. <laughs> Uh, I was always, you know, we was always at the house with Kyra. And uh, yeah. the same year when I finally made it, I said, I'm going to go to TSU. Kyra, I mean, Steve, came, he was just had to be at the house like a couple of days later or a week or two later. And Kyra was like, hey, 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 tell him where you're going. And so I was like, I'm going to TSU. Pa. He's like, you going to TSU? All right. He didn't say nothing else. He was like, all right, cool, man. And then immediately, he like, well, I, I work with you on some stuff, so yeah, like well, he he's not a I thought you gotta go here, but go here, man. Don't go around here. He ain't never been that type of person. He's just let you do. Mm-hmm. No, he's a, you know, he whatever you're going, he's gonna be like cool. But when I that that say I'm going to TSU, like, all right, okay, like okay, we reached the goal now. So right, right. Then, you uh, finally came aboard, so right. <laughs> so everybody, everybody is super cool, man. Super cool. He'll be on next. Cool, man. So we going to TSU. We made that decision, and um, uh, you going to march with your cousin for the first time, right? Or did you do alumni? Well, did you do the when the all star then was it? So that all going back, it was the alumni band first, right? And that started the summer after my freshman year at TSU. So this is okay. um the year two thousand going into. 2001. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, 2001, going into that 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 fall semester, and um, then you hit the All Stars uh, on the other side, and over the years that morphed from uh, we had several cool battles, man. Just uh, everybody coming back together, and getting a chance to play. Oh, uh, on that, man, real quickly, the how that came about. Westwood and Whitehaven will always have their big showdown at the end of the year. Right. And they had an idea to bring alumni back to participate in part of the show. Mm. But people from other schools showed up for their rehearsal just to watch. Right. And there was so many people that they was like, okay, we can't really turn all these folks away. We should do something with this. So boom, that birthed the alumni band. That's where that came from. Oh, okay. sir, yeah. shout out to Westwood and the Haven, you know. Yeah. We'll have to drop some right there. It was Haven forever. It's in my veins. You know it's Haven forever. Yeah. It ain't gonna change. Shout out to the Haven Oh, uh, cool, man. Hey, you know, that's, that's something that I didn't even know. I just, I never knew how the alumni band actually got started. I know um, mm-hmm. Mike Cowens was involved in it uh, mm-hmm. at the beginning. I him, him and Snoop, I believe. So yep. yeah, man. Correct. So that's cool, man. Hey, man, we got some. Man, we got we got we got some history, bro. Memphis got history, man. We gotta keep this thing going. So yes, sir. let's talk about that freshman year at Tennessee State. What was that like? What do you remember from those that year? I don't know. I think y'all had. Uh, I don't know y'all big big games. Of course, the Southern Harris, but. I know y'all did a lot of traveling too, uh, during your tenure at Tennessee State. I think y'all went to Vegas uh, before or something. But let's go back to that. That would be in two thousand two. 
Okay. Okay. So first freshman year, um, you know, in that conference, there's not a lot of HBC. Right. Well, we are the only HBCU only in that conference. Up. So you're looking forward to those classics at the beginning of the football schedule mm-hmm. to see other bands that do what you do, right. you know, similarly to, to compete against. So, um, yeah, freshman year, it was like, like, whoa, you're here now. You know, you, you were looking at this section for so long, now you're in it. So it was, it was, you know, pride and I was proud and I was excited. And at the same time, it was a leveling up. You know, mm-hmm. this isn't high school anymore. We, they used to have us chant that all the time. Like this ain't what, high school. And, and it wasn't because you're surrounded by more people who take it even more serious than they did in high school. Uh, the playing ability of people on different instruments, like all of that went up and the rehearsal time, <laughs> that was longer than what I was used to experience in the high school. Um, we're talking like, I think if I remember correctly, that was the longest pre-drill. I think it was three weeks in length. Yeah. And that was my welcome to the year. next level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was my welcome to the next level moment. You know, when you're going from 5.45 a.m to nine for whole band then you got sectional rehearsal after that get as much sleep and rest as you can get up and do it again you know Wednesday would hit here get here and you would hit that Wednesday wall you going to lunch thinking it's dinner like you you don't know what's going on because of the fatigue and the, the amount of information you're taking in from the songs to learning the style this is what we do this is what we don't do and it's just like band all day long so uh, yeah, that was the moment when it hit me like, yeah, you're at another level. I, I, even though I was so familiar, Pops had been telling me like, you know, this is kind of how it's gonna go, yeah. but it's different when yeah. you're doing it and mm-hmm. you're hearing somebody tell you. That's so cool. Yeah, I remember um, once we did three weeks too. We did the freshman week, then the upper class did day week. We was on that high intense set schedule. And then that last week it kind of pulled back. I don't know if y'all pulled back, but you know, press we started later. And when we started later, my body got relaxed. And I remember me being late um <laughs> for Uh-oh. practice. Uh-oh. It started at 10. Press started at 10. I woke up at 10 30. My got to the bedroom. All my fresh bros just looking at me. I'm like, golly, them boys over there sweet. I'm like, they've been working out. I'm like, my bad. <laughs> my bad. I, it, it wasn't nothing I could do about that, man. I was, it was, it was yeah, I was, I was done. So I did yeah, that, that uh, 545 call time and going to bed when you get done is real. So cool, man. So, bro, bro I understand. I, like, it, it, it went on so long. That I was like, okay, when does school start? Man. You know, like I'm, I'm ready I'm, for this got, day got, to be cut in half I'm, now. I'm gonna tell this story. It's a confession story, but um, we were uh, it was doing pre drill, and I think it was that third third week or something like that. It was a Saturday, and they called certain people. You had to go over to the admission building to get some stuff worked out mm-hmm. for school. I ain't gonna lie, Jeff. I saw this was my opportunity to take a break. <laughs> <laughs> matter of fact, I'm gonna tell you, matter of fact, it was the week before. It was, it was the weekend. This was like the Friday before orientation for the whole for all the freshmen, because the students mm-hmm. had already moved in. So that Friday, they called my name, said go over to the building. You go talk to such such myself. I was like, okay, cool. And I went back like. I got. I could go. I could go home for a minute. I'm gonna go home for the weekend. Cause I, I in my mind, we was supposed to be off that weekend anyway. So something mm-hmm. happened, and we they ended up practicing. I was like, it was a Saturday. I was like, damn, messed up again. I, but I was at the house, man. We went. I, I went to Prom Mac, and I said, Prom Mac, I gotta go home. They told me I need to have this such 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 such. It's the week. I think I need to bring my uh, diploma or something. I said, I gotta go mm-hmm. home and get it. They said, you don't, can nobody get. It? I said, now I'm gonna run and go pick it up, and then I'm gonna come back. I went home Friday. <laughs> I ain't get back to Sunday, before right, right before uh, orientation. I'm like, man. Oh wow. They told me what was going on that Saturday. I'm like, y'all got in trouble. I, Cause they got in trouble for something. I'm like, what? And I'm at the house. I'm like, my bad. 
it won't be. I I'm, didn't get in trouble for me. They got in trouble for something that happened while I was gone. But I had and I'm pretty sure something. there was some new material introduced during that time period too. Probably. It probably was. No. I can't even remember. Yeah. I don't lie. I can't remember. But when I got back, we were good though. They were cool. Everybody was cool. They were. Well, they didn't know what was going. On. I knew. But okay. now that I hear this story, like, yeah, I I took a break. I went home for a day. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, man. So let's talk about you know what what, what year did you become the uh, sexually in Tennessee State? That was that was the two thousand two. I think it's oh one oh two school year. So like you was that like your break. second year in the band. Third. third. It was it was my third year. Uh, Tony Davis, aka Cheese, out of Fairly High School in Memphis. Uh, was essentially oh, my first two years there. So uh, I took a lot of cues watching him, the way he run the sex, he, he would run the section. Like uh, that's when I learned about the presence, you know, if you're in a leadership position, like having a plan, being organized and having a structure to how things should go and like embodying that and exuding that when you stand in front of the group, because when it's time to figure out what we're doing they're gonna turn around and look at you and take all their cues from you uh -huh. so uh getting to watch him do that for my first two years there you know that first year I'm learning the ropes come back sophomore year I kind of know a little bit what's going on and as an upperclassman now it's my time to be an example not really saying much of anything but just doing what I'm supposed to do every time uh -huh. so because there's another group that's just come in behind me that's watching to the third year where now you have more of a speaking part and and you're instrumental in like the operation and the band staff has expectations you've got expectations because like now it's your moment right. um yeah so that was that was something else a little, little story i'll add is that summer going into that band camp i was in it on campus for uh summer school taking some courses and i had the letter inviting me to band camp and saying that i had been offered the position to be section leader mm. and it was such a wow moment that when I think back to man you did two years of high school band and two years here so that's four and now okay. year five you're offered a leadership position like it really was like I was taken back like like whoa like what are you serious and I left that letter uh, in the dorm room on, on that, that counter in between the two closets. You know how I was in the door. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I looked at it every day for like a couple of weeks before I actually signed it and turned it. I almost waited too late. But uh, <laughs> because I just really couldn't believe that that was in front of me and there was the opportunity. So now there's this weight of expectations of, OK, now it's your turn. Like, don't screw this up, uh -huh. you know. So, yeah, cool. Man. You had uh cheese in you because you had no choice but to be successful at <laughs> cheese, you man. Yeah, cheese, your, your, your cousin and, and, and his best friend. Yeah, you weren't escaping nothing. <laughs> Pressure, like I remember, like going back to the freshman year, we were uh, we were getting ready to start a rehearsal again, but the percussion section, we were already at our at our spots and standing up with our drums strapped up. And it was a horn player that came by and was like, oh, you Pops cousin, huh? And I was like, you know, kind of a little small acknowledgement because we really ain't supposed to be talking at this time. And he was like, oh, okay, I'll see you on your stuff. You'll probably be sexually doing cheese done. And I'm like, <laughs> dude, I just got here. You know, right. like, I just got here. Just so like, here. right. Oh, man, that, look, that, man. that's the, in, that, that, the impact of Steve, man. I tell it's, it's it, you people can hear you talk about it, but if you had experienced that man's presence, it's like you don't understand it, man. That, that man, him, him and Cheese both, man. Them dudes are some. They special. They get. They just. They just special, man. They can't. You can't explain the impact that them folks have. And then once you get in and you make your own way, then you become into that same kind of category, bro. It's it's crazy. Mm -hmm. So let's 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 talk about a little some little information that I was trying to trying to remember or learn about or recall the dynasty the new dynasty snares okay I think, were you one of the first ones yeah I know Tennessee State helped with the um the design of the uh, leg wrist was prop line correct uh you're probably right uh-huh 
Okay, so what year was that that y'all got the dynasties? And uh, cause nobody had them. Uh, but TSU, but let's take it back a little bit before TSU had dynasties in the nineties, right? Mm-hmm. So a lot of people may not have known that that you know back in the day they had some dynasties, and then this new model came out with Prop Line. So what was that experience like? You know, getting those prototypes and you know feeding and you know, all that stuff. So got an interesting story about that, but about the drum itself. Um, this will be my fourth year, my last year that I marched in a band. I think that's, yes, yeah, 0203 mm-hmm. uh, academic year. And it was different. Um, you know, we were so used to, like, especially for me watching the section of high school, we were so used to seeing them in those pearl free floaters. Mm-hmm. Um, so now this is a different drum. Um, it was It was cool. I wasn't a big fan of the first head choice uh that we played with starting off for the majority of the year and and that was probably because me coming in and being introduced to show style march and percussion like i was indoctrinated with that the power stroke 77 like right. that like just just give me that and i'm good you right. know and, and i i just felt like it, it suited what we did like as far as our interpretation of how we how we played so um but yeah man i, I, I love the drum especially when we put those 77s on Man, it just it just it just was seen, man. It was seen. And um a quick little little note, uh, real special opportunity I got that last year was to attend the Mid- Midwest Clinic in Chicago. Huh. Uh for those who don't know, big educational uh conference for people in music. Um and I got a chance to be at the Dynasty booth mm. in full uniform, playing with a little pad over it. To, to demo the, the the equipment at that time. And that was just like super, a super cool moment, man. Yeah. You see band directors from, from other HBCUs walking by, but it's TSU in uniform at the Dynasty booth, right. you know what I'm saying, Dem- demoing the, uh, the, the product. Oh, yeah, man, that's, that's dope. So what was the uh, the first head? You said you didn't, know, you didn't care for it too. What, what head would y'all have? Was it a flam? <sighs> man, I, I, you know what? I don't remember what it was, and that might have something to do with my preference for it. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'm I'm not sure what it was, but we had been on Power Stroke 77s for the majority of the time. We also did the uh, Premier Field Snare Batter. It had these two rings uh, in the center. Like, it didn't project as much, but up close, man, I love the way those heads sound. It just didn't last long for the type of play uh that we did there but in mainly yeah that was pretty much all we used until that that last year we had uh whatever that was and i was like i can't wait till we move back to 77 and we finally did and i was like i'm gonna tell you what's funny when i first got facebook i was putting you know whatever year it was i can't remember but i was trying to get pictures and profile pictures right so one mm-hmm. of the pictures that's on the, if you go to my Facebook and go back some, you, the profile picture is actually you <laughs> playing the Dynasty at the, one of the TSU games. It was way oh, back. Wow. Yeah, it's a, I remember, that's why I remember, like, yeah, just played the Dynasty. Okay, so cool. Oh, wow. And then the Dynasty was a different color from the, the red that, you know, that been right, used. Right, we went all white. 10 years uh-huh. or so. So yeah, cool, man. So let's talk about uh some of that material. I know one of the the dopest cases that I know of, you know, one of the dopest ones is a nine oh one. The nine oh one, you know, heard a lot of feelings with that case. What went into the the creating the creation of that case? And it's in what other cases have you written that people may not know you have wrote? So <clears throat> that came about again going back to community and environment um there were many times i'd be in a dorm and i just kind of had this routine where where i would just kind of zone out turn the lights down a little bit just enough to be able to see the sticks and the pad um and then i would just play like it was just like you know like an artist would doodle and these rhythms and these patterns and stuff would come to me it, i later found out mainly because I had kind of taken away all the other inputs and it was just you in in the uh in the drum pad um and on on community my good friend uh reggie bond reginald bond from mm-hmm. from brownsville marched in uh in the band came in 2000 with us 
he would always drop by and I would be playing some and he would say, oh, what's that? What you working on? And I would always have this dumbfounded like response, like, I don't know, I'm just playing. <laughs> you know, like I, I wasn't trying to do anything. I was just, you know, being expressive. And he and many others uh, pushed me to start like, hey man, take those, those chunks, those ideas and start putting it together. And so 901 came about that way where I had a couple of patterns that I would just play for my own enjoyment that were completely isolated from each other. I wasn't trying to do anything with them. So I started taking those pieces and seeing if they would fit. Then I later got with uh, Terrence Jordan out of Tresden High, uh, Memphis, and Patrick Brooks, Brooks from East High School. These were both guys that came in during the year I was section leader and they later became leaders in, in the section and was section leader, both of them yeah. uh, at, at two different times. Uh, got with them and they helped me mold the rest of the other lines parts. And then we later came up with sticking. Uh, Reggie helped out a lot on that. And boom, there was there was the piece. And it was my way of, you know, with that collaboration of giving something back to something, you know, to the the, the group that I had, you know, like just completely fanboyed out on doing high school. And now that I'm here, so like, what are you gonna leave? To contribute, uh, and if they find it useful, you know they keep playing. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Reggie Buzz, TP, my bad, not TP, mm -hmm. T Jordan, and Big Bro Pat Brooks. Both of those dudes are some killers, killers, oh, yeah. killers in their own right, man. Shout out to those fellas. Cool. So let's go ahead. So uh, as time progresses, you, you you've all like you say one of the biggest things, one of your biggest takeaways from drum is community. Well, you also acted in that role yourself, because I know you, you've you've helped with many schools, giving advice, pointers, ideas, input uh, with different drum lines. <clears throat> but I know, uh, especially around 2008, 2007, 2008, you had a very big role uh, with helping our guys at Whitehaven uh, with some stuff and uh, some ideas and even with 901, you're like, no, nah, can't nobody just play this. Like, it, it has to be a certain, <laughs> you, you, it, it, can't know anybody play this. And so, man, I don't know how JJ did it, but he got you to the school and uh, he listened to the drummers, the boys we had, it was chopping them. And you just listened to them play. And you were like, they got it, <laughs> they got it. <laughs> and uh, man, they learned their cadence in about, what, three days? Because we played it at the showdown. I think it was about and three days. They learned that whole cadence. <laughs> and the little backstory on that got me in trouble because <laughs> actually you guys were never supposed to get it at all. Right. Right. Barely had already asked. Mike Cowens had already <laughs> talked to me. As a matter of fact, we were at the Southern Heritage Classic. And as soon as TSU got to the kickdown and it was at the end, uh -huh. he turned to me, he said, hey, Jeff, <laughs> you bring that to Fairly. And so, yeah, I, I got in trouble for, for, for passing that down. I ended up having an opportunity to work with Trey Mon right, and, and Shaq in creating something for them yeah. as an answer. But uh, yeah, man, that, that was that was cool. Like my whole thought process and at the time was, I remember when Potts would bring people up to Hamilton and help us out. Mm -hmm. uh, so I wanted to recreate that and, and pass that on down. So like I had to, you know, proud alumnus of Hamilton, but I had to like set allegiance aside and like wherever I could help, because uh -huh. I know I benefited from it, uh -huh. then whoever will have me, then I'm showing up. I'm there. It, it didn't matter where you were. Yep, and Steve was a big component of the same process. Like, he did the same thing. He came and helped. And, and, and that's just one of the dopest things about you know, good people. They don't care where they went to school. At. If they can help you, and they see potential in you, they see the opportunity. I like, look, I won't feel my time, time will be in vain. I'm gonna help. Mm -hmm. Because you love the craft and you wanna help, you know, mold that next generation. So I'm very, very um, grateful for y'all for that um for that that uh that mindset and that that openness to do that. Cause Steve does it all the time, you did it for us all the time. Courtney stars can't leave stars off. Mm -hmm. Stars mm -hmm. came mm -hmm. did the same thing. So I mean, we had a lot of a lot of legendary people people 
helping with those sections and uh, those groups are so cool, man. I appreciate that. So, uh, once the community thing, you still got that going, but another opportunity came in 2015, I think, 14, 15, when you became the, the percussion instructor for the new age, new era of Lane College <laughs> <laughs> and uh, help excel and mold, mold that group into where they are now. So let's talk about that time. How did that come about? So that was an opportunity that came down the road from an er a much earlier connection that I had made many years prior to that. Um, for the younger viewers who may watch this, let that be a point to, to hold on to is um, be mindful of, of your connections and the people that you, you meet and like stay in contact with because you just have no idea what it leads later on. Um, that's from uh, Mr. Cos Cosby Smith, who a uh, good friend of mine, we call him Cos, um, they gave me that opportunity, but I met him many years prior, like high school was, mm. was really, so we, we're talking, uh, what is this, 90, 98, 99 school year, and from him giving me pointers over the phone, mm. and, and one of those things was, all right, man, you know the International 40? Yeah, okay. Every rudiment that's written that does not alternate, learn how to do it. Like even though it's not written that way, but it's the exercise for your mind and your hands, learn how to do that. So um, he later moved down uh, from from Detroit to Memphis when a, a school that had been closed was reopening and was reviving a band program there. Mm -hmm. So he asked me to come aboard, and I obliged. Uh, we were at Douglas High School, and had some great times there. And then he later got the opportunity to take the job at Lane. And he was like, hey, Jeff, you know who my first call is? All so right. I'm gonna ask you first. Uh -huh. you know? And by this time, man, it had been so many years of like, you know, alumni and mass band participation. And I'm kind of starting to be less visible and less, uh, less present in, in like helping out, you know. So I, I wasn't really sure where this was gonna fit. But then I thought about, it, I was like, okay, this is the last chance or opportunity that you know of anyway at this time to hand down whatever you got left, right. you know, to this group. And so got there, man, we, we started small, uh, had, had a really humble start, but it was amazing to see how well that group allowed me to lead them and impart what knowledge I had at the same time while holding back and not stifling their creativity. Right to make the section what it was, you know, that they wanted to be a part of. Because I had my little my little glory moments, like it's about them at this point. Right. Um, so yeah, like going from not on the radar to I'll never forget the day on a Facebook group where somebody says, WT versus Lane College Bloody Rain, who you think will win? The fact that the question was even posed right. said everything I needed to know. I didn't care to read a single comment I just knew it was 987 plus responses underneath that thread. So I was like, okay, this must be working. Mm -hmm. But but it was tough because yeah. you know, I was working the nine to five that had nothing to do with music. Right. And then I would hit the road and go to Jackson and we would pick it up and yeah. But it was, it was good stuff, man. Good times. Very they, great. They, uh, they became the standard, uh, you know what I'm saying? For a good period of time, so they still they still up there. They they not they ain't fell off the map or nothing like that. So yeah, shout out to y'all, man. Shout out to their work, man. So cool, bro. <clears throat> so what uh what uh what what let's let's talk about a couple of your biggest. And you you kind of touched on them. Uh, one of the guys I can't not let be mentioned, the legendary prof Johnny Lane. Oh yeah. Oh, how yeah. much how, how much has he? influence you and, and motivated you and, and and stayed on you by certain little things. Let's talk about his influence on you. Man, uh, yeah, definitely not to let that get lost because this was a huge part too. That was part of that, uh, that what, hey, you at the next level moment yeah. was meeting him and and one of his students who was on the staff at the time, uh, Dr. Tony oh. Um and learning like, you know, I had the, the way I played in high school, which was clearly enough to get me by. I did the, the, the audition and, and make the line. But now now you have to look like the line. 
and major influence, man. It's 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 amazing how much he got done in the two weeks with us doing pre-drill that set the tone for the rest of that semester. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of his um uh, his knowledge that he passed down, uh just like Lou, uh exercises and things to do. I would pass that same thing on. Like when I would come up to Whitehaven, when you had the crew of guys there, like I was just repeating what I learned from, from Prof Lane. Um, but yeah, like it's, it's hard to, for those who hadn't had opportunity to meet him or, or see him speak, it's, it's hard not to be motivated after hearing him or watching him do what he just got this presence. And, and I took cues from that too, because when I had the opportunity to go work with a high school section, I was mimicking a lot of his same presentation. Like it, it was still Jeff, like doing my take on it, right. but I wanted to bring that same energy and excitement to help give them a reason to take something mm -hmm. and then go back and say, okay, you know, I worked on such and now look what I got. And that was really cool to see students do yeah. over time. Yeah, man, Prof. Lane is, man, he, he's very, very funny. I, we quite, we talk quite often, almost daily, you know, we kind of, chit chat on the phone or on Facebook, you know, just talk, just talking in general, not even about drums, just just talking, yeah. man. He's just one of the one of the a great great person. Now I know he's a, a very motivated. I know he's he was always talking about Jeff on that drum set. Jeff man he can give Jeff on that drum set man. <laughs> so yeah man. A like, living prodigy man. Like he yeah special. Special man. He done a lot for the HBCU community man. So mm, oh yeah. I pay homage to the man, ja, Prof, uh, Prof Johnny Lane. So, yeah, yes, hey man, we can't we can't not let that slide past. So cool, man. So, man, Jeff, you've done a lot, bro. You've done a lot, man. You've helped a lot. You've impacted a lot of people, man. Uh, I know Chris Pat, and he loved him some Jeff Tone, man. That, that my section, man. Jeff Pat, Jeff, one of the baddest drummers out, man. Chris Pat, but uh, man, you you've touched a lot of people, including uh. That's a Huh. That's a that's another guy that's very special at what he does. Very much so. Awesome. He, he'll be awesome, on next man. one. <laughs> he'll be on next <laughs> one, man. We're gonna work. Oh yeah, that's a treat. That's a treat. Yeah. Chris Pat is definitely uh one of the, one one of those special ones also, man. And uh and I, yeah. I'm listening to you talking how you you know how you progress and your your playing method from when you started in 10th grade to you know, as you progressed on, and that's the same thing that Kyron talked about. So I'm pretty sure he took all your methods and put it, applied it towards him as he was um, coming up uh, off of base drum. So. Let me, let me, let me, let me talk about my other cuz. <laughs> I talked about his big brother. Uh. So I'm trying to do the same thing that his brother did for me. Right. He's coming up. Only he's like the upgrade. He's like the 2.0 uh -huh. because I'm not giving him as much, but he's coming, like he's absorbing it and coming up with more. So like, I, I remember having a conversation with one of the uh, band staff members uh, when I was marching in state that I was like, this next one coming up is gonna do more than I have. Like, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm sure of that. And, and he has, cause like, He's on staff right. with, 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 with a band right. and, and, and has brought his creative interpretation to what it is that they do now. But uh, yeah, I saw it happening as, you know, when he was still a high school student. I'm trying to remember when it was that he started. I know he went on snare right. at first. He, 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 was, start, he started on bass. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. And it was like, I remember he said, I'm going to let him tell the story too, but he was like when he got to uh, Mitchell, he was at Mitchell, and they put him on. He was on base, and they found out he was a uh, Pop's brother. They said, "Oh my, we would be cold. We got Pop's brother on base." <laughs> <laughs> and Kyra said, "Boy, were they disappointed?" <laughs> and so he was talking about he saw he talked about going into the dungeon. He said, "I went into the dungeon, bro." I was like, "What you doing in the dungeon?" Oh, yeah. And that's where he became because not from ninth grade. Got I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna say this. Because I seen the tapes. The Potts family has the vault of Memphis drummers. <laughs> and they will not release it. They got whatever you need to know. Because I just found out Steve, you know, Little Potts, well, Big Potts was recording and watching videos back then too. So I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. So I mean, you guys from early 90s up until 
you know, a few years ago, but my daddy pots, he stayed with that court cameraman. Every time an event happened, like you said, you had the little inserted tape that you put in the tape. Every uh -huh. event, we we in Memphis and uh uh oh yeah, Uncle Steve was there recording after it was over to Pot's house we go. <laughs> we finna watch that right now, man. So if everybody wanna know the history of Memphis, Kyron Potts family, Steve Potts, Jeff Thomas, <laughs> Steve Potts number one, they have it. So if we can ever get that put out there, you will learn a whole lot. But man, I watched that tape with Kyron when his first performance on Snare Drum with Mitchell, it was ninth grade. I was like, wow. <laughs> he had a brand new show. <laughs> Everything I like. I said, bro, <laughs> how did this happen? To 10th grade, he was the section of the All-Star band that year. So I'm like, what? And that's when we met 10th grade, so. But yeah, man, I could see like- I would, I would come home from school on weekends and he'd be like, hey, Shaw, let me show you this. And he'd have like this whole little solo spree run that he would play. And I'm like, oh, like that's- that's kind of nice. Like I hate you just showed it to me because I would have still had to take it back to you know. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, man, he was he was on point, man. He it was just like it just happened all over again, a different person, but with his unique perspective and presentation of it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. There's a tape that he has right now. He won't. He will not let it. Like nobody will see it. Like we've seen it a couple of times, but it was after uh that two thousand. I'll say three all-star alumni showdown at Whitehaven. Mm -hmm. And he was outside in the back challenging. Uh, the guy actually went to Whitehaven named like Jerry Cox. And that was Jerry's supposed to be going to Tennessee State. But uh, they were playing. And man, Kyron, <laughs> hey, Jerry, my boy. But Kyron killed that boy so bad, man. It, 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 he was not, and he's so humble with it. You know what I'm saying? He don't want to die. Nah, we ain't even watch that. Like, bro. Pull that tape out, man. <laughs> that man was killing with that dead draw, man. I'm sorry, he didn't beat the, 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 life, the life out of the head, man. But that job was cool, man. But yeah, bro. So, man, I appreciate you coming on and hanging out with me, man. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, giving me some of this knowledge that I never knew and hearing some great stories and details about, you know, how you progress through life and giving a lot of gems that, it, you know, young people, you watch this, video you can learn a lot man all it takes is just dedication and hard work and you can mm -hmm. accomplish anything and you can accomplish it accomplish it quickly it's just small things and just about your drive so man take those notes and just apply them to yourself and watch what you can become man and, and i would add that you know it's going to be a lot of growing pains moments in there that are not going to be for the gram right like it's not going to always look great Right. Um, and trying to stick with it when those show up, because those are the ones that, you know, maybe I didn't say a whole lot uh, in, the, in, the, in the minutes that we've been talking. But yeah, they're, they're, they're sprinkled in there too. I had plenty of those, mm -hmm. uh, but like reps, man, just like just to keep, keep doing it over and over again. And it becomes familiar, becomes easier. And then you start having these avenues open up where you can be creative and like, oh, I wonder if I can put these two things together. Oh, I saw them do this. But what if I do it this way? And that's when you really start to get that fruit coming back from all that other less celebrated, glorious work that you put in so that you can get to that part. Man, cool, bro. Cool, man. So take, take note, man. This is not an easy road, but if you stick to it, and push through it, man. You're going you gonna to be successful. That's what anything in life, once you even go past drums, as long as some positive that you're trying to achieve, stick to it and you're going to get through it, man. So, cool, man. Yes, sir. Man, I appreciate you, bro, man. I appreciate you. Thanks for having me, man. Again. Man, no, it's all good, man. It's all good. We're going to get you on again because some stuff going to come up. And we I got a couple more segments I'm going to add to the channel. So, definitely okay. got to get you back for your expertise. All right. and, and and big shout out to you for what you're doing, man. Oh, um, bro. Like, man, like again, the community here, here you are contributing, contributing back to it. Uh, so, man, if you if you made it to this point, like, subscribe, share, man, support man, this, support, support <laughs> these efforts, man. Uh, it's yeah, because I know how it benefited me, even though we didn't have this this medium at that time. But it's the same thing, you know. Things have changed. Uh, young folks, you, you got access, like crazy access to information and, and it can be overwhelming. It's like getting thirsty 
And rather than going to the kitchen and get a glass of water, you get some tools and go to the nearest fire hydrant and open it up and drink from it. It it can be a lot. Right. Just just take take it in chunks, mm-hmm. uh, and just you know, pace yourself. Be be nice. Pace yourself. It's right. a lot. All right. But yeah. Cool, bro. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. So for the rest of y'all, the top nation, man. For the rest of your life, don't forget it. The chops don't stop. And y'all have a good one. And they were like, who? And I was like, oh my God, dude. Like, how young are y'all? But um, yeah, man, just he was super influential and my planning ability growing and everything. But just giving doing this in this format, man, giving a chance to shout those guys out because this is like fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh generation of people coming behind each other that's coming up now and they have no idea where it started. Right. So you giving us some shine, man. We appreciate right. it. I appreciate it, bro. I push record on this too, so it's gonna be in the video. Oh. Don't, worry. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, it's gonna be a bonus feature. But yeah, but, man, man. Courtney Star, shout out to you, Courtney Star, bro. You boy, I, I gotta, I gotta say this about this guy, man. Hadn't been all around the world playing, but from what I was exposed to, there are only two people that have played a show style marching band type. Uh, percussion approach that have produced this sound. Courtney Starks is one of them. Mm-hmm. The other, I don't know his last name, but he marched at Jackson. His name is Herman, tall, skinny guy. Mm-hmm. But those are the only two people I've ever heard play a drum and produce that kind of sound off of it. Like, you know what rudiment they're playing, and in your mind, you've practiced and you've played, and you're like, okay, I can't go no faster without it starting to dirty up. And you got your friends and your peers and they're playing. You're like, oh, okay, he's a little faster. And then you see the one of these two guys play and they take it up another notch that in your mind you never would have thought possible, but you know it's real because you're hearing them do it. Like in boxing, when they would say pound for pound, the best fighter. Yeah. Like stroke for stroke, man. Like he could produce a sound that it would intimidate you to the point where if y'all squaring off going back and forth, hey, man, you got that room. Right. You got that. Let's move on. <laughs> and look, I'm gonna tell you another funny because Kyra again on tape. Kyra had all these tapes, just like teaching home a couple times. So uh they were in the pit, and exactly what you were saying, y'all they were playing, they were the shades and maybe some fire shows. There's other yeah, some fires like the old sixes, maybe one of them too. And my mm-hmm. Courtney was playing, and I don't remember who the other snare drum was. And Courtney played, and the other snare drum played, and then Courtney played, and the other snare, drum, and then Courtney played, and then done just I was like, oh, but yeah, just it would take off. My like, Cordis, yes, Cordis Stars, Power, and, and this clean. None. That was the I difference. Nothing you would hear people thing. speed up, but like the emphasis on the accents would start to drop as the speed went up. Not with this guy. He right. had both. <laughs> yeah. He had both. <laughs> it was a freaking robot, man. Cordis Stars, man. Yes, I know exactly. I was like, I said. I seen it even when he was, you know, he stopped playing a little while. He got a little older. He still had it. It's still, it's not yeah. gone. It's not gone. You know what I'm saying? And in that video, just listening back then, I like, oh my god, <laughs> Carol, like, mm-hmm. that my cold. I like, yeah, he cold. <laughs> he cold. So yeah, yes, bro. Sir. Call the stars, man. Shout out to you, bro. This is V Rock Chops. Chops. Chops.